Okay, this video is a movie review, and the movie is called Prey, uh, the story of Patrick Payton, Father Patrick Payton. He was an Irish priest, and it's an incredible story. I'm telling you, if you have somebody like you want to help a marriage stay together, or you want to help somebody, you know, have a sense of purpose in life, go ahead and buy them this movie. You could buy it on Amazon. Um, it's extraordinary. It's really great. Okay, here is Father Patrick Payton. He's the Irish priest. He was born in 1909 in a very, very poor family, and he lived until 1992. This guy's an incredible guy. Okay, so he grew up, they, this was just a cottage that they said was like his cottage, but I doubt it. I'm sure it was much more poor than this. I have an uncle who owns a little farm, lives in a cottage like this, and uh, I saw my father's home in Ireland, you know, the dirt floor. So poor, it's not even funny. My uncle's home, the animals, the farm animals walk in the house. It's not a joke. And there's no there's no tile on the floor. It's just dirt floor. My father's house is a dirt floor too. I saw it when I went and visited. Okay, anyways, um, he had nine children in the family. The father had them pray the rosary every night and that left a strong impression in him. <clears throat> he only got a sixth grade education. There were no jobs. He went to the United States hoping for uh, opportunities. Uh, when he was a teenager, in his late teens, he got tuberculosis, and he was coughing up blood, and they thought he was going to die. Uh, everyone thought he was going to die. They said, well, we can try a thoracoplasty surgery where they collapse the upper part of the lung to decrease the oxygen in that area, and thus, you know, hopefully uh, prevent the tuberculosis from growing. Uh, he prayed to the Virgin Mary. Actually, I'll show you the slide of that, because that was kind of a key part here. He was coughing up blood. He was hospitalized in bed for months, dying of tuberculosis. And they just said, you know, pray to the Mary, pray to the Virgin Mary as you did when you were a child. And uh, maybe that'll work. Otherwise, we're taking you to the operating room and, you know, we hope it works, but we're not that optimistic. Okay. And uh, he prayed to the Virgin Mary and made a complete recovery. And that had a big effect on him. And he decided to devote his life to becoming a priest and... Uh, spreading the word of uh, Mary had brought him to Christ and saved him, okay, and can save other people. So he was very motivated to try to share his message. He didn't know anybody, just a poor priest from Ireland. And uh, he wrote over 20,000 <laughs> letters to ask people to help him to have a radio show that he could uh, share the rosary and pray on the rosary on the radio. And he literally, finally, people supported him. Uh, he was charismatic. He had, his heart was in the right place. And he ended up... Um, having rosary rallies all over the United States and other countries. Um, this is just one thing a lady said. She couldn't conceive her and her husband. Praying the rosary is Mary bringing you to Jesus. And uh, she then, you know, they were able to have children. Um, and then the saying that was that became characteristic of uh, Father Patrick Payton was, the family that prays together stays together. And he said, each family should be like a small church. Wait till you see what I'm going to show you. This is an extraordinary story. This is like, this, this is just a little intro. When you, when you see the story, you'll be, you'll be amazed at it. And like I said, too, if you have a married couple and they're having problems, you want them to stay together, buy them that movie. Trust me. Okay. Um, he basically felt the world was sort of teetering and tottering. Because you got to remember, this is before World War II, then during World War II. And then after World War II, the Cold War and stuff, sort of like, which way is the world going to go? It's either going to go to love and Christ and Mary, or it's going to go to Lucifer, okay? And Lucifer's winning, okay? And that's kind of sad, but that seems to be the case. So many families, you know, all said they had this inspiration for Father Painting. And wait until you see what happened in the Philippines. It's an incredible story. Okay. Father Patrick Payton was a very charismatic speaker, and he really didn't say much other than talk about saying the rosary, and people went out in massive numbers to see him. This is 1945 when he spoke at San Francisco Golden Gate Park. So think what San Francisco is nowadays, okay? It's like a homeless wasteland. Back then, they could get 500,000 people to attend a rosary rally. That's 500,000 And his uh, rallies were famous for the slogan, the family that prays together stays together. And there were billboards everywhere. There was call center, you know, letting people know about it. And there's all these families playing the, praying the rosary. And you'll see family after family saying how it got them together. Because nowadays, a lot of modern families, nobody talks to each other. Everybody's got their own schedule. They show up at different times, eat their meals at different times. They don't spend that much time together. 
Uh, so this is a powerful thing to get families to spend some time together. And they spend time together, they tend to like each other more, get along better. Um, the other thing too is Hollywood used to be a lot better than it is now. Hollywood used to have a lot of good people. Nowadays, here's what Hollywood is all about. It's it's awful. The more you study Hollywood, the, the less you're going to like it. It's so bad. This is not even funny. It's like the main place in the world for this right here. It's unbelievable how bad it is. Okay, so anyways, you know, here's Bing Crosby. He was an Irish singer, great singer. He's got one of the best uh, Christmas Carol records. Lucille Ball, the actress, you know, Maureen O'Sullivan, Frank Sinatra. All these, they wanted to help him. They wanted to do something good for society. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was a lot of good things. Okay, this is just more. I mean, he would spoke to sold out stadium after stadium after stadium to these massive crowds, massive crowds, hundreds of thousands of people. It was rather incredible. Okay. And his message was not that complicated. He talked a little bit about his life in, as a poor child in, in Ireland, his father saying the rosy and explained to them how it can help keep their family together and do all kinds of good things for them. And they agreed. Okay. He was then invited to the Philippines. He met here with the, uh, let me take my picture off of here. He spoke with the, the bishops in the Philippines and they arranged for him to speak in the Philippines, which he did. And trust me, this is going to, amaze you what I'm about to show you. I was amazed when I first saw this. In the Philippines, the attendance at his rosary rally was two, over 2 million. Over 2 million people. That's not, a, that's not a misprint. Over 2 million people showed up. It was incredible. You know, waves of people, an ocean of people. All right, and they went to listen to what he had to say and to say the rosary with him. Okay, so what happened after that? And by the way, you wonder why is it that ty ty tyrannies want to ban the rosary. Here's the reason why, right here, what I'm about to show you. Because remember, somebody's a Christian, they're harder to control. They want to do whatever they think is right. They don't want to just do what they're ordered around to do if they think it's wrong. So Marcos was this cruel, brutal dictator. And he basically said, ah, oh, what's this Christian BS? And they were marching in the streets saying they want freedom. He said, you know what? He told the military to go out into the streets and he told, you know, get your machine guns out and just shoot all these stupid people, run them over with the tanks. And so the nuns marched together <laughs> in front of the tanks, as did the people. And they said, we want to have, you know, free speech. Let us have free speech. And so the tanks came right out to them with the machine guns out and they were ordered to shoot the people. And they said, no, these are our friends and our families. We're all Christians. Uh, we're not going to shoot them. And they didn't. And Marcos had to abdicate and, you know, and increased freedom was restored to the Philippines. So that's a rather incredible story because if you remember what the word religion means, think about it in Latin. It means relegare. Legare is from the word ligate, to tie, to like to tie together a knot. So that's an important point. Relegare is to tie, to ligate, to tie a knot. A, a surgical suture is a ligate. There's a ligature you can call it, for example. So anyways, that's uh, what saved the Philippines. And he was friends with, you know, all these other people. He was friends with, you know, Pope John Paul II, with uh, Mother Teresa in Calcutta. And then, you know, after, you know, the hero returns home, he, uh, you know, the Irish priest, he went back to Ireland, you know, to pray at his parents' grave. And this is, Ireland's good for this, that they'll have the, the family graves. You know, they used to be out in front of the church. When I went out to the church, gosh, I found this old book here. I don't know if I could find it. I think I got the page marked where when I went to Ireland, I got to see where my ancestors were buried. So here's, uh, here's one of the priests and my ancestors. I'm like, shit, I can't really show it that well. But um, I saw all their graves in front of the old churches in Ireland. So that was nice to see that on my father's side of the family. Uh, so anyways, rather incredible story. He spoke to many millions of people, like around over 28 million people. So I, I, the movie's called Pray, The Life of Father Patrick. And trust me, the movie's much better than anything I could show you. I strongly recommend uh, you get that movie if you want to help somebody, you know, come to terms with their religious feelings, um, help keep their families together. It's, it's beautiful. It's great. It really is. And this guy was a great guy. He should be a saint.